Good afternoon, friends. How are you? I'm filming this on Tuesday, November 10th, and I'm not sure if it's going to go up onto YouTube right away or not. I had a moment, and so I figured I would just come on here. There's nothing for you to see. There's no reason for you to see my face. I'm talking about wax today. I'm going to be talking about a lot of wax today. I'm going to be talking about 20 bars of wax. This might be a little bit of a longer video, obviously, if I'm going to be talking about 20 bars of wax. Bring Back My Bar is a campaign that Sensi has twice a year. They open up a sort of a voting station and they allow both customers and consultants to vote on their favorite discontinued scents and the top 20 that get voted in are then released for one month at a time. This year they are doing it for a month and a week, which is great because it always seems that a month is not enough. Also because if they only have it available in the month of December, past the first week of December, you can't guarantee that it's gonna to get to your house. So they are doing it a week earlier than they were originally going to. I'm going to be going through all 20 cents. There is only one in here that I have not smelled. Okay. I do have four of them here in front of me. For the other 15, I will be relying on my memory, my memory, and I will be giving you my honest opinion out of all of them. And we might as well go alphabetical. Okay. A wink and a smile is described as the flirty, girly, fresh scent of tulips and daffodils in bloom, rounded out with plummy lemonade. I remember a wink and a smile to be very, very boring. I remember it being only slightly floral. The lemonade, not so much. What I remember about a wink and a smile is that it almost had melon in it. That's what I remember. I, like I said, you know, I'm a Scentsy consultant and I'm kind of like, oh, am I an expert? I don't know. I melt a shit ton of wax. And so I, I remember this one pretty well. I remember thinking that it was very boring, but that's just me, okay? Amber Hollow. There were a lot of people who were surprised that Amber Hollow came back. A lot of consultants and customers alike would probably challenge Sensi and ask for proof, ask for receipts about who actually did request Amber Hollow to come back because I personally only know two people in my entire Sensi community that liked Amber Hollow. Described as clove leaf, cardamom, and dark amber spice up a warm cedarwood base. Amber hollow smells like West Indian cooking, okay? It has a tendency to pollute all the wax around it even when you're not warming it. The oils will leach out of the wax because it is so strong. So if you like it, then you're gonna be pleasantly surprised by just putting one cube of wax into your warmer and it'll probably stink up your entire house. I couldn't even warm this outside and that says a lot, okay? Apple s'mores, harvest apples, cinnamon glaze and a drop of coconut milk lend a tantalizing twist to a classic toasted marshmallow vanilla cream and warm cedar wood that's a lot apple s'mores i'm not really sure why they uh, uh it, see they, they it doesn't even have a uh, graham cracker in there not really sure why they call this apple s'mores it's kind of like okay so you do smell the the marshmallow and you do smell the vanilla and you do smell the apple I don't necessarily smell cedar wood. I smell a little bit of like a burned, like a toasted marshmallow. I don't smell coconut milk. Now listen, I'm not smelling this right now. I haven't smelled this one probably in about a year and a half. I do enjoy it a lot. About two years ago, they came out with bricks in apple s'mores and I missed out. I wasn't able to um, get that brick. It sold out before I had, had an opportunity to buy it. Um, apple s'mores is great. Plan on getting it. This, this will accommodate both the fruity people and the bakery people and the floral people. Apple s'mores is a good one. Black currant bubbly, I do have sitting here right in front of me and I will smell it. Now, um, this is very clean. Oh, but let's read the description. Champagne bubbles stir black currant, sweet orange and vanilla sugar. This is very clean. It's not overly sweet. The champagne bubbles are very prominent in here. This is a very, very interesting scent. I'm going to suggest that everybody try this one because you never know what you like until you smell it. Um, I have people that hoard this. They buy 30 and 40 bars at a clip. It's only been available twice since it went discontinued in 2017. So I suggest that you just get yourself one bar. By the way, these are gonna be $6 a piece. 
three for 17, buy five, get one free. So six bars of wax for 30 bucks, pretty good deal. Now, cashmere pear is actually my number one top rated Scentsy scent of all time. And I'm very interested to see how they are going to formulate this because it has not been back into the catalog since 2017, hasn't been available as a bring back my bar, nothing. So that tells me that they were having trouble getting the oils in the past three years. And uh, I'm wondering how it's going to smell a lot of people know that when something finally comes back and bring back my bar, sometimes it doesn't smell exactly the same as it did when it first came out in the catalog. So we'll see. It's described as slip into sensual white amber, Madagascar vanilla, sick, silky pear, and warm red ginger. A blend as smooth and luxurious as fine spun cashmere. Now, the other thing about my taste buds, my smell buds, if that's what you want to call it, is that generally anything that Scentsy comes out with that has the word cashmere in it, I love, but I'm not sure what cashmere smells like. They put cashmere in the scent description, but isn't that like a kind of wool? That's what I thought. And um, it doesn't smell like an animal. It smells like luxurious perfume. Okay, moving on. Central Park Pralines, decadent confection of rich roasted pecans, buttery caramel, and cinnamon sugar. This is not my favorite. It is way too sweet, way too much of a candy scent. It's very nutty. The pecans are very strong, very buttery. It's everything that you just heard in that description, and that's why I don't like it. That's not to say that it's not a good wax. It smells really strong, smells for a really long time. It's just my personal preference. It's just like, you know, I love to eat cabbage and my husband can't eat cabbage. He just can't stand it, it's disgusting. I don't like Central Park Pralines. You might love it. Cozy Chai is described as warm, spicy cinnamon, vanilla bean, and caramel. I smell a little more of a cardamom thing when I have smelled Cozy Chai. Not my favorite. I find it to be a little too strong for me. When I'm dealing with candy slash bakery scents, I don't like them to kick me out of the house. I don't like it to be too strong. That's just me. I would, I would clump clump, I would lump cozy chai right in with Central Park Pralines. In fact, you could probably mix the two together. Cutie Pie Cupcake is the one that I have never smelled. Described as sweet clementine and yellow cake batter with vanilla and sugary icing. Now, if you know me at all, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to like that. So um, I'm going to warm it. I'm going to buy it. And I'm going to warm it. But uh, yeah, Cutie Pie Cupcake, it sounds like it's going to smell a bit like, um, you know, those lemon flavored uh, Hostess cupcakes that you can get, um, or maybe like a Twinkie or something like that. Yeah, not going to be my favorite. I have a feeling. Lavender and White Balsam is also in my top five. This is one of the best Bring Back My Bar campaigns that I have seen in a long time because some of my absolute favorites are in here. L Lavender and White Balsam is just amazing. As soon as I found out that it was coming back in this Bring Back My Bar, I went ahead and warmed the last bar that I had been hoarding for two and a half years, I think. Lavender freshened by wintry white balsam and crisp amber. I know that sounds very basic. This is an amazing fragrance, lasts a really long time. It's not just lavender, it's not just tree, it's not too much amber. Lavender and White Balsam is fantastic. Marshmallow Mint was in the catalog when I first joined Scentsy. Buttermint and Marshmallow make merry beneath an amber veil. This is not my favorite. It's a little too candy-ish, but people who love Marshmallow Mint crave it. They hoard it. They love it. Um, it smells like the buttermints that you used to get when you used to be able to go to restaurants before COVID. <laughs> and you stick your hand in there and they say that it's like 70% urine. Great. Gross. But... You know what I'm talking about. Those little individually wrapped mints that are real soft. It's like a pillow. That's what that smells like. Okay. So marshmallow mint. Not overly strong, by the way. My Dear Watson. My Dear Watson was in the catalog the first two or three years that I was a Scentsy consultant. I was surprised that they took it away. They always paired it with uh, Mystery Man. It's in the masculine category. Refreshing bergamot contrasted with mint, cedar, and suede. Sophisticated and smart. This is, this smells like a hot dude. This is the perfect wax for a, you know, somebody who has an apartment, 
uh, maybe a bachelor, uh, maybe um, somebody who, you know, leans towards the masculine side of the world. Uh, My Dear Watson is fantastic. It's definitely not um, floral or feminine in any way. If you have to be dichotomous and say it's either male or female, it's 100% male, okay? Painted leaves I have here. I have a tester here. I'm going to go ahead and smell this. I remember absolutely loving this. Wander through blue spruce, red maple, and golden woods. Unbelievable. I think there's a little apple in here. There, and when they say red maple, it's not maple syrup. It's trees. This, this smells like literally wet leaves that have just fallen off the trees. It is an amazing fragrance, but it's very season specific. So if you buy this on November 23rd or in the month of December, go ahead and warm it right away. Don't be warming this like in June or July. It's, you're going to be all confused. This is a very autumn fragrance. I love it. I'm glad that it's coming back. It's going to be going into my Scentsy Club, along with lavender and white balsam and cashmere pear, just so you know. Peppermint Dreams, a warm rush of chocolate cupcake sweetness, cooled by a blast of fresh mint. Now, if you like Andy's mints or Junior mints or Peppermint Patty, you're going to love Peppermint Dreams. And while I love those things as candy too, I do not want my house to smell like chocolate and peppermint mixed together. Nope, 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 don't want it. I have warmed this. I enjoyed warming it, but on, a, on the regular, no, I don't really like to warm my house with, um, you know, Junior Mints or the Andes Mints, you know, stuff like that. Plum and White Woods. Plum and White Woods is also going into my Scentsy Club. That's one, two, three, fourth one out of these 20 that are going to be going into my Scentsy Club. Plum and White Woods was the scent of the month for, oh my God. I think it was February of, no, it was January of 2018 because it was released with the Once in a Lifetime Warmer, I believe, Scent of the scent and Warmer of the Month. I'm really stretching. My brain is exercising right now. It's described as sweet raspberry preserves and damn some plum weave through vanilla orchid. Anything with orchid is right up my alley. Anything with plum is right up my alley. Plum and White Woods is fantastic. That description doesn't have woods in it, but there is a light woody scent just in the background. Plum and White Woods is fantastic. It's in my top 10, 100%. Okay, pumpkin marshmallow. Now, some people think that pumpkin marshmallow smells like cat pee. Some people think pumpkin marshmallow smells like gasoline. I used to be one of those, and I have a bar here in my hand that I picked up in a flash sale and I like it. Is that weird? <laughs> your, your nose really changes. It's not just Sensi's formulations. Okay, the description is sticky, sweet marshmallow spooned onto fresh baked pumpkin and wrapped in a graham cracker crust. I smell all that. I even smell the graham cracker crust. I'm like loving this. So I made a bunch of samples and then I warmed the samples <laughs> because I was like, wow, I really like this. And this is not my type of fragrance because it really is sticky sweet. I don't know why, but I love it. So I'm not going to be giving away any samples. <laughs> I used it all for myself. Okay. But it's not going to be going into my Scentsy Club. There's enough, you know, sweet stuff in Scentsy to go around. Quiet Grove is going into my Scentsy Club. Oh my goodness. This has not come back since it was in the catalog in 2018. A soft spell of bergamot, jasmine, and sandalwood. That sounds very basic. But Quiet Grove, you put it into your warmers. Two hours later, it smells a little bit different. Three hours after that, it smells a little bit different. Seven hours after that, it smells a little bit different. This bitch changes as it goes. It lasts forever. It's never too strong. Even when you first put it in your warmers, it is not too strong. It starts off as the bergamot, and then it goes to the jasmine, and then it goes to the sandalwood. It's amazing. They did not have a Scentsy Club subscription in existence when this was in the catalog or else I would have been getting this for the past three years. But alas, now it's coming back and it's going into my Scentsy Club. Okay, uh, four left. Sweet Amber and Freesia. Crisp layers of Verbena Blossom, Freesia, and Sweet Amber. This, from what I remember, is super duper duper boring. 
Um, the amber is not very strong. The verbena is not very strong. The freesia is not very strong. Like nothing really stands out. Those three things mixed together sort of make their own scent. And it's a little bit boring. I don't remember exactly what it smelled like, but I remember being bored. I could probably go back in my videos and watch my reviews, but I'm just going to be getting this on November 23rd anyway. So why bother doing that? Sweet plum pastry. People were going crazy. I was going to say something rude. People were going crazy because sweet plum pastry is coming back. So now the lovers of sweet plum pastry can put it into their Scentsy Club. Although this has already come back and I bring back my bar like a year and a half ago. I'm not sure why this came back again because people have already gotten it into their Scentsy Club. Um, it's described as black plum and toasted coconut garnish a marshmallow cloud. This is a straight up bakery scent. I told you before that anything with plum I love. This is the one plum that I don't see what the hype is about. They've turned a plum scent and they turned it into a bakery. And no, I don't like that. I like my plum to be in the perfume category. I don't like my plum to be in the pastry category. So y'all can take your sweet plum pastry and warm it over there. Not by me. Okay, so the fact that they put vanilla out and vanilla suede into the same campaign, I think was a little bit redundant. These two smell similar. In fact, when vanilla out went sold out, I was like, well, do you have any vanilla suede? And when people wanted vanilla suede, I was like, how about trying vanilla out? Um, these two are, are I, I think, are redundant. They don't smell exactly the same, but if you like one, you will like the other. So it didn't really, for me, in, in my opinion, it didn't make sense to put these in the same campaign. Vanilla Out, I do have here in front of me, and I do love it. And the reason why I have it in front of me is because I stocked up before it went away. Vanilla Out is described as sweet vanilla grounded by leather and earthy oud wood. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm putting it down, but I love Vanilla Out. I had stocked up on it, and I warm it all the time. Vanilla Suede, classic comforting vanilla combined with rich amber and hints of sandalwood and spice, a cozy, subtly masculine fragrance. This is not subtly masculine. This is a masculine fragrance, but don't get me wrong. It's not that women can't enjoy it. I would wear this as a cologne, okay? But also my husband would probably wear this as a cologne. This is am ambidextrous, no. <laughs> this is an ambiguous scent. It can, it, 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 runs the rainbow. Anybody who's a human being is going to like vanilla suede. Vanilla out is definitely a little bit more woodsy and vanilla suede is a little bit more like with the amber. But listen, if you like one, you'll like the other. If you're familiar with vanilla out, go ahead and get vanilla suede just to give yourself a little bit of variety with the other way around. If you like vanilla suede and you've never smelled vanilla out, go ahead and get vanilla out and then you're probably going to like it. Mixing the two together was probably gonna be fantastic, but probably won't make either one better, okay? There we go, that's a long ass video, I'm sorry. These are going to be coming out on November 23rd. I would suggest that you buy them right away. And I'm not just saying that because I make money when you buy on my website, talcomop.com, but it's because these are gonna go sold out. That's why they're doing it a week early also, because I, please, everything because of damn COVID. Everything sells out all the time. That's all I can say. All right. I will um, talk to you guys later. Sorry about the length, but at least there was girth. Talk to you later. Bye.